under the sea. Ultra beats wait for ye. The third and final place for the convergence awaits expectantly. Okay, no more copyright infringing music. Welcome back to our post-game area of the star, the Ultra Convergence. If you didn't already guess, the basin is a deep sea area filled with water types everywhere. This would technically be the second area you'd be suggested to go visit, as it's the only one without a seasonal guardian dragon. But of course it is no less scary. In fact, the basin has some of the most aggressive Pokemon found around. First, let's do the tradition of introducing another form for our Cast Form Evolution Disaster Form. I like the idea of following suit with the Fire-type Disaster Form and having it wielding sort of a blue bubble around its head, also much like how Cast Form has it. But I wanted this form to be adapted to the Ultra Basin, maybe not as environmentally disastrous as the other forms. Or maybe it's the one that filled the Basin, maybe once it was the Ultra Crater. Whatever it is, I wanted this to be based on both scuba divers with the diving helmet, but also include a sort of fleshy rebreather in front of its face, that would probably inflate and deflate with air, maybe even the water helmet doing the same. I also base this slightly off Sea Angels, which Beast Burst Regibronk is similar in, that with their weird, cute looks till they unleash those just crazy head tendrils, just horrifying. I think this one would be a chill encounter. It would be floating ominously around, even if you get close, but would be a medicine battle. Surprisingly enough though, it's probably one of the more chill Ultra Basin Pokemon. <coughs> Disaster for Rainy Form, the wild weather Pokemon of water and dark time. Evolves from Cast Form while in the Ultra Convergence, or when exposed to an Ultra Stone. Cast form to find their way into the Ultra Convergence quickly adapt to the wild weather conditions of each biome. This rapidly evolves Cast form into its disastrous evolution. It swims through air and water, using the bubbles that emerge from their body to drown foes. It moves slowly about to draw in prey like a fishing lure. Pokemon of the Ultra Basin know not to antagonize Disaster form. Disaster form has the ability Weather Warning, where it changes form depending on the weather powering up the weather when it transforms as well. So let's meet our main obstacle in the Ultra Basin as it would be the most scary and damaging thing apart from the boss. Drifloon is always going to be a scary Pokemon, more due to Drifloon and the implications of their dex entries. But what if they are even more explosive? Like their main goal is to blow up. Here Drifloon takes on the form of a naval mine that lives within the Ultra Basin and they just spend their days just violently exploding on anything they can get their hands onto. I thought it'd be fun to get a fire water type up in here, just because I think it's a cool type combination. I love the sort of flesh chain motifs that some Pokemon have, in the case of Petra and the Loyal Free, as well as Delmize, which I guess is more kelp chain. I really love doing them in my designs, and I thought it'd be cool here if it kept towards more of a Drifloon-like design where the little strings become big, thick chains which Drifloon would just latch onto you and drag you slowly in, flashing slowly and then getting faster and ready to blow. Am I the only one here who wants to just, like, press the X on its mouth? Maybe in this form it would diffuse them, or cause them to blow up instantly. I love gambling. Whee! <laughs> Drifblim, Beast Paradox form, the mine Pokemon, a fire and water type. One of the greatest threats within the Ultra Basin is the Beast Paradox form of Drifblim. Highly aggressive and volatile, this Pokemon must be avoided to avoid risking your life. Their bodies are packed with explosive gases that constantly vent from the top of their head, resembling raging fire. When it spots prey, it launches its chain-like arms to grab it and then pulls it close before violently exploding. In certain areas of the basin, the density of these Pokemon is so high that no one has been able to breach those regions. Drifbloom has the ability Ultra Aftermath, which is the same as regular Aftermath, but it can't be changed or removed from things like Mummy, and also just switching back to its regular form. So here you are, underwater in the basin, using the Roto Sub to move slowly through to the end, a large cave system further below the basin. But to get there, you'd have to avoid the Drift Bloom. Sure, you can run into them and battle them, and I guess catch them, but their high damage stats and aftermath ability would slowly be chipping you down. And sure, they may only be in certain parts of the basin, but what about near the floor? 
Well, you Stella might run into a familiar face here. I think one of Pokemon's best qualities is being able to make funny designs for places that would be kind of horrifying. I mean, the base Ultra Beast, like Buzzwall, are still endearing and funny, even if it is an alien mosquito made to drain your blood. My idea here was a form of Wiglet, although it could be Diglett with how it goes and it retains the typing of both of them, so consider it a bit of both here. But they have become large and pointy as a way to not only blend into the strange stalagmite floor of the basin and deeper caves, but also to hunt. I mean, Diglett already uses their bodies to dig underneath and then burst through the ground onto enemies, so why can't this Wiglet become a jagged spear that would definitely cause some damage to their rock-type prey? This one doesn't have much in the way of things to say, it's just the pointier, sillier Wiglet, Diglett hybrid that also has a bit of a bobbit worm inspiration in the way it hunts. You'd be navigating through the stony spires under the water till one of them spins about and tries to headbutt you for a battle. <laughs> Wiglet, Beast Paradox form, the stalagmite Pokemon, a ground and water type. Wiglet that become trapped in the Ultra Basin take on this curious and sturdy form to blend in with the environment. They are constantly at war with Steelix in the Basin. Wiglet hide within their large tunnels and when Steelix swim overhead, they launch upwards to impale them like a spear. Any chunks ripped off Steelix are quickly dragged back into the tunnel to be devoured. Some Wiglet will rend stones surrounding them to resemble Wiglet, making it easier for them to hide and ambush prey. Wiglet has the ability Ultra Solid Rock. As you can see, Steelix also makes their home here, and a prey for the Wiglet, the sort of. I love Steelix's design, I do wish it was a little better in stats, or maybe just a little more balanced in its stats. For this design, I wanted it to be that Steelix is actually an Astara native Pokemon, once in a star in form that kind of went extinct due to the very real life problem of coral reefs being destroyed in the Great Barrier Reef but the Ultra Convergence was welcoming for the most part, except for the stabbing Wiglets. So here he's oh, thriving. thriving. Stilix is now a massive moving coral reef using a bit of their regular and mega forms for the design here, replacing the steel for the horned and little bit of shelf coral, making for a pretty good subnautica looking leviathan. Stilix also is able to blend in a bit here as there would be alien coral you could see around the reef with bioluminescence and all, and some of that reef may just leap up and strike at you if you aren't careful. It'd be cool if Steelix had some form of bioluminescence too. And there's another Pokemon we'll meet next that is also always glowing. I chose rock water here as it was the most fitting for what we had here in the giant coral monster snake. Gonna have to call him Coralix after this. Steelix, Beast Paradox form, the Coral Overlord Pokemon, a rock and water type. This form of Steelix was once a native Pokemon of Astara. Due to the degradation of the coral reefs, they went extinct there. However, those that fled to the Convergence flourished and adapted further. Their massive forms allow them to go uncontested except by the Wiglets that hunt them. Their large, crushing jaws can rend most other prey with ease. When they rest, they blend in seamlessly with the alien coral reef of the Ultra Basin. Steelix attacks any research vessel it encounters, making research very difficult. Avoid this Pokemon at all costs. This form of Steelix has the Ultra ability Sheer Force. It can't always be ambush predators and horrid monster Pokemon, so here's something a bit more chill. I like the idea of having Caracosta here, sort of be a bit closer to their pre-evo, thanks to living almost exclusively in the basin and thriving. They lost their rock typing and gained steel typing thanks to the minerals they eat, just the sheer need to survive against all of those water types. This is based off the Hawksbill Sea Turtle, which is found to have a glowing shell thanks to algae, and Caracosta I'm sure has some kind of nasty mini pokey algae all over them. Pokerus didn't leave, it just evolved in the Ultra Convergence to become Algae. Now that I think about it, it'd be kind of cool to have a Pokerus transform into a Pokemon thanks to Ultra Radiation. I love Caracosta and Archip, so it makes sense I shoved both of them into Astara somehow. If Astara ever got DLC, I think I'd end up shoving Credilly somewhere in here as well. Caracosta Beast Paradox form. 
The steel shell Pokemon, the steel and water type. This form of Caracosta may possibly represent what they originally looked like before becoming fossilized. Without rock incorporated into their bodies, their steely hard shell protects them well from the threats of the Ultra Basin. Despite their strong bite and powerful flippers, they are quite docile. Researchers have even been able to ride along on the Pokemon with no complaints or aggressive behavior from Caracosta. The glow of their shell seems to come from a new species of algae found only in the Ultra Basin. Caracosta has the Ultra ability Sturdy. Our last two Pokemon are Pokemon found a bit further into the basin. Another kind of Pokemon here and our required Ultra Transform starter, Superior. Here Superior takes on more of a venomous and creepy form, being turned into a sea snake with a bit of an eel mixed in for good measure. Keeping in the theme of camouflage, the Superior here keeps a bit of that royalty theme and holding onto the flowing sort of cape shoulder parts that it once had, but now becoming a bush of seaweed like tendrils that when it lies down allows it to ambush prey anywhere it needs to. I actually made a bit of a concept page for it as I was a tad inspired to show what this would look like in general. It also kind of looks like a noodle or banana which kind of makes it a bit more endearing. Although, don't get too close, this thing is incredibly venomous and got that ultra poison or something like that. Problem is that it's relegated to the poison water typing we see quite a bit, but it's a venomous sea snake, what do you expect? <coughs> Superior Beast Paradox Form, the Sea Snake Pokemon, a poison and water type. Superior has adapted to the deep ocean and now exclusively lives in the depths of the basin hunting Colossodile by using their excellent camouflage as seaweed to ambush them. Their markings and eyes glow bright yellow when they are angered, and in the darkest parts of the basin, this glow is often the only visible sign of their presence. Many Pokemon are transfixed by this glow and quickly become prey. Although highly venomous, Superior can be trained to be quite gentle and makes an excellent research partner in the depths of the basin. Superior has the Ultra Ability Poison Tongue. We have traversed the basin's many threats, explosives, spiky wiglets, giant coral reefs, and even venomous serpents. But what could the final threat within the basin be? Well, I sort of already said it in the superior entry. But this Pokemon is around the basin in small supplies, doing the sort of speedy bluzer thing. But they're only small and not that scary. But our boss version? Well, this one is much scarier. First, if you are new to a star, meet Colossodile. A big old fighting type croc from the swamp area of the game. Go here to see that full video. In Ultra Space, however, it took in a very strange look and adaptation. Now, though the crocodiles aren't alligators and all that, but it's never stopped Pokemon before. But this isn't just an alligator. No, my no. This is an alligator gar, the fish. Gars are one of my favorite types of fish. Just this long, permanently angry looking fish that has toxic row. You'll actually see soon another Pokemon Evo I made, not canon to a star or anything, use this same premise. But I thought it would be funny to have it be this almost proto Colossodile that's this fish like shape with much of the same design choices as Colossodile. And I can't think of anything funnier than your trainer coming to the deep basin to have the Roto sub just be swarmed by a bunch of these little Colossodile, only for the swarm to be dispersed and see this giant, like 11 foot Colossodile staring at you with their chompy grin. Then try to take a few bites before the battle truly starts. Colossodile Beast Paradox Form, the Alagar Pokemon, a dark and water type. Scores of Colossodile can be found throughout the basin, with one particularly large Colossodile dominating the region and exhibiting the ability to direct the scores to bully other Pokemon. Although adapted to water, some behaviors from their original form remain. They still favor their ability to latch onto prey and spin rapidly. While not as large and dangerous as their star forms, a school of Colossodile employing this tactic on prey is even more intimidating. Despite their danger, they are also delicious and have provided research teams with a valuable source of food. Colossodile in this form have the ultra ability Swift Swim. So the battle would be against a massive Colossodile in a sort of sun and moon totem battle where it'd have a boost to their defenses and constantly calling upon other normal sized Colossodile to swarm you. Once it's at low enough health it'd drop two Drifglim on you in a final act of desperation, but you're just too strong and handily get rid of all that chat. 
With our third area down, there's only two left, so comment down below where you'd like to go. The Ultra Forest where a mysterious force emanates from within, or the frosty Ultra Snowfields where survival is key. So what did you think of the video? Comment down below where you'd like to go and what Pokemon you'd add to your team here. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel to never miss a video. Share this around to all your diving and fisherman friends, as I'm sure we all have many of them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next dive. My main goal is to blow up.